Hey, this is Jazz 2 Resurrection. I don't know if any of you other fellow old farts played Jazz Jackrabbit back in the day. Uh, I was about 12 when this game came out. I was looking for a version for Android. Uh, the game can't be emulated in RetroArch because it is not a DOS game. Uh, it was actually designed for Windows 98. A quick search on Google let me know that apparently there's a native, like, source port of it. Uh, it works on both PC and Android. Uh, the first thing you'll have to do is you'll have to legally buy the game. Um, I know most of us probably don't have our copies anymore. Uh, I actually had two physical copies of this game when I was younger, but they got lost over moves many times when I was younger. Uh, or fortun or fortunately, you can actually get it on GOG for $2 right now, so... Uh, I've never played, like, you know, Doom ports and stuff, you know how those work, where you need to actually own a legal copy of the game, and then you give it the files, and it converts it into something else. That's pretty much what it does here. Uh, you will take the, the original files from the game. Uh, they recommend Secret Files, which is on sale right now for $2, as I said. You can just grab that, and then it will, uh, it will convert it to this port. Why did it go into, like, check there for some reason? <laughs> Alright, let's try this. There are a couple of differences with this port. Uh, for one, you can't... You can't auto-run. It's a little bit awkward. There's never a reason where you don't want to run in this game for the most part. At least when you get good at it. They added ledge grabbing to the game too, which is pretty cool. I don't remember having that in the original version. Unfortunately, if you don't have a responsive D-pad, it can be very difficult to play this game because every time you push down in the air, uh, you will do the ground pound, <laughs> which is really awkward. I tried playing this on my Kitty Sitting stream tonight, and I ended up having to stop playing it because I couldn't really control the character because that Razor Kishi controller I have is a little bit sensitive. And that's just a problem with the way that the game is designed. This is an old game, keep in mind. <laughs> it's not like an old, it's not like a brand new indie game or something. Lots of minor differences, like you can, trans you can transition between levels a lot faster than you could in the original game. Every level had like a, a windscreen, kind of like Sonic. Which is an obvious inspiration for this. <laughs> you have to keep in mind, Jazz Jackrabbit, for those of you who are younger, was basically Sonic if you didn't have a Genesis. <laughs> uh, back then, as much as we complain about PC ports on console now, they were way worse back then. Uh, a lot of times you just didn't get good ports in the first place, and if you did, they were usually gimped or limited in some way. So sometimes you got games like this by people who actually knew what they were doing, and Still good in their own right. Yeah. Spaz was my favorite as a kid. Actually, I was pretty close to a teenager when this came out. I was like 12. I think I got this for like my 13th birthday. things that sucks about uh, Jazz 2 over Jazz 1 is that Jazz 1 had really awesome, like, Sonic-style bonus levels, but 2 basically just teleports you to a different area with a bunch of uh, power-ups and stuff. Not as interesting.
soundtrack in this game is very good. It's done by Alexander Brandon. Uh, you might know from a little game called Unreal Tournament. This is essentially an auto scroller boss. <laughs> first 2D platformers to have online multiplayer. Uh, back when this came out, there was a shareware demo that was distributed over the internet. I played the crap out of that as a kid. And then, on the full release, actually in the, uh, the regular release of the game, the shareware, they actually had a uh, capture the flag in there. It had a lot of the modes that you would expect in like the 90s era. Uh, First-person shooter and had to like, capture the flag, deathmatch, and stuff. Capture the flag was pretty fun because if you were good at controlling the character, you could could make uh, points really fast. Um, I remember being pretty good at it, but I have to get used to how this game controls. See, it's an older game, so there's games that control better than this now. But the fact that I was able to get this legally, especially in a week where we're all talking about game preservation or lack thereof. Uh, all the Sony stores shutting down by the summer. It's nice that I was able to get my legal copy of this off GOG and then uh, just convert the files and then play it on Android, which is pretty awesome too. However, like I said, playing this on Android is a little bit more awkward than intended because if your controller is too sensitive or the D-pad is not good, you're going to run into situations where you ground pound a lot. Yeah, and that can make things very frustrating. <laughs> the game's not really designed with that in mind. This game was designed with the controller. I think I think they had a pretty big uh, promotion with the Gravis Gamepad Pro at the time, which, like I said, back in that era, there were not very good controller options <laughs> for PC. PC ports were pretty bad back then for console games, and then they had very little, uh, very little controller options. Very good in this game. Uh, the soundtrack is available legally too. I don't remember where, but you can actually get the soundtrack for this. Actually, I should also mention uh, if you played Dust and Elysian Tale on Xbox 360 or Steam, uh, that was actually made by the same same artist that did this game. So most of you have actually already played a game similar to Dust, Jack Rabbit Dust, or Dust is uh, more of a melee-based game, but pretty similar in some ways.
Actually, yeah, this, this game had a lot of firsts. It was also um, one of the first 2D platformers to have a built-in level editor. Uh, it was actually the level editor that they used to make what I'm playing right now. There were a lot of levels for this. I don't know if they're compatible with this version or not. Uh, I know that there were a lot of levels made for this game. <laughs> a little bit like Mario Maker, but a lot older and less accessible. The quality of the levels greatly vary, just like it does on Mario Maker 2. <laughs> yeah, literal 12-year-olds like me at the time making levels and then keeping them Maybe they had some level design experience from elsewhere. <laughs> People made, like, whole extra campaigns and stuff. It's pretty cool. Jazz is a lot like uh, a 30XX character. <laughs> they didn't really design the game with a double jump in mind, so a lot of times you can skip stuff like this. So if you have that speedrunning mentality, I think uh, Ace is the... not Ace, but Spaz is the character I would recommend. Jank, not gonna lie. You don't always get hit by things that are your fault. set for the shareware demo, which I definitely played a lot of as a kid. was only one Jazz Jackrabbit game after this, and that was the Game Boy Advance one, which was made by different people. Uh, not a terrible game, but compared to this, it's pretty lackluster. You have a lot of other better platformers you can play on the, <laughs> the Game Boy Advance, too. Alright, well, I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. I'd uh, show people this. Like I said, you don't have your old files around, which is pretty likely because this is a 23-year-old game. You can go ahead and grab it on GOG. Uh, all the instructions will be in the description, uh, including where to buy the game legally, which is, like I said, two bucks right now. So if you've got money to get a coffee in the morning, you've got money to play this. And uh, you can also port it to Android with the exact same files. Uh, that is what I did today. Uh, I played this a little bit on my kitty sitting stream today, and uh, I ported it to PC, and then I ported it to Android and just installed it, and uh, that was it. Uh, it. It looks a lot more complicated than it says on the instructions. It's basically just getting the original files, which like I said is easy, 
because it's available legally on GOG, and then just uh, just dragging the directory over to the import file, and then it will, it will create the, uh, the new port for you. And then you just dump that on uh, Android and just install the APK. And that's basically all you have to do on PC, you don't even have to do that step. Thanks for watching.